the acetabulum up till now remain an enigma to the orthopedic surgeon, a mysterious fracture for the orthopedic surgeon. Although treatment of acetabular fractures has rapidly evolved over the last three decades, many questions about these injuries are still unanswered. So the learning objectives of this talk are to evaluate a patient with acetabular fracture, aiming to define a decision-making process for management of acetabular fractures, to list the indications of operative and non-operative treatment, and to put a plan for the surgical treatment. First of all, how can we evaluate a patient with a stabilized fracture? We can evaluate the patient himself, and we can assess the fracture. We have two main points, patient evaluation and assessment of the fracture. For the patient, we have some tips that are important before we go to decide whether to fix or not to fix this fracture, whether to put a plan for surgical treatment or not. These points, number one, the hemodynamic stability of the patient. If we have unexplained hemodynamic instability, we should do pelvic angiography to exclude pelvic vascular injury. Second, we should assess our patient neurologically. We have high incidence, relatively high incidence of sciatic nerve injury with these acetabular fractures. The reports range from 12 to 38 percent. Third, we should assess the hip condition. If there is associated hip dislocation or not. It is an urgent situation. Fourth, the soft tissue assessment. Whether we have a perineal tear or not, and of utmost importance, the, what is it called, Morel labelle lesion. We may have a large subcutaneous hematoma with fat necrosis in a degloved closed skin injury. These injuries are associated with high bacterial contamination. So we should diagnose these injuries usually they are located over the greater trochanter or the iliac, the side of the iliac bone of the back of the patient. They are very important not to miss these injuries and to plan for your surgery without diagnosis of this type of soft tissue injury. Regarding the fracture assessment, we should classify the fracture. Yesterday you took lectures about classification of acetabular fractures. So we should classify our fractures. We locate our fracture regarding the acetabular roof. And we assess the articular involvement of this fracture. As well as assessment of the hip joint stability, hip joint congruity. These are the most important points in fracture assessment. So we will do our radiological workup. The AP view, the Jude oblique views, CT scan, and put, please, put in mind the two column concept of Jude and Letourneau. In order to classify these fractures and in order to imagine the three dimensional uh, concept of the pelvis and acetabulum, usually we have this concept, the three-dimensional structure, it is not a flat structure. So, <coughs> you may have the elementary fracture, the simple one, simple fracture, either posterior injury like posterior or posterior column, anterior injury like anterior or anterior column, or the transverse one that interrupts both, or we may have more complicated fractures like posterior column plus posterior wall transverse plus posterior wall, T-shaped anterior pipe with posterior hemitransverse and both colon fractures. We have lectures about these fractures, but you should diagnose and declassify. The second point, what is the fracture location in relation to the acetabular roof? This is the most important point, especially in transverse fractures. 
This is the area representing the superior wood bearing area of the assemblum. And according to Matta, we have the roof arc measurements. This is to assess what is remaining intact and sufficient to make congruent relationship between the head of the femur and the weight bearing area. It is an indicator for operative or non-operative treatment according to these measurements. We measure this angle, as we can see here, from the center of the head of the femur, a vertical line, to the point where the fracture will meet the uh, articular surface of the astabla. We measure it in both, in, in three views, AP and obturator and iliac oblique views. If we have these roof arc angles more than 45 degrees in all views, in transverse type fracture, with congruent heads, we may go ahead with non-operative treatment and follow up the patient without surgery. The CT subchondral arc is related to these roof arc measurements, but it is supposed that if we take subchondral ring of the acetabulum 10 millimeter inferior to the subchondral bone of the roof, this area will be intact if we have the roof arc angles more than 45 degrees in all the three views. These are supportive for the non-operative treatment as well. This is an example of the roof arc angle in the three views. The third parameter in assessment of fracture, the articular involvement. Is the fracture displaced or not like any intra-articular fracture? Any displacement of the joint is not accepted. There is no acceptance to leave a step inside the joint. Second, what's about the impaction, the roof impaction? It should be assessed when we take a decision to do our surgery and to plan for this surgery. And third, the associated femoral head lesions. The fourth parameter, the hip joint stability. How can we assess this joint stability? We can assess the joint stability from the CT scan, for example, in posterior wall fractures after reduction of the dislocated hip if most associated with hip dislocation. We can measure the fragment of the fractured posterior wall. If it is more than 40% of the whole posterior wall, we expect instability of the hip joint. If it is less than 20%, mostly the hip joint will be stable, although there are reports of dislocation in 15% of the posterior wall fractures. But in between, it is a hazy zone, and you should do the fluoroscopic stress views in order to test the stability of the hip joint. You can't leave the patient this is stable without fluoroscopic stress views after reduction of the hip joint. Lastly, the hip joint congruity. We should guarantee normal anatomical relationship between the femoral head and the acetabulum in order to take a decision, decision of conservative treatment. So we should look in the x-rays in all views and CT scan in order to say this is a congruent hip joint. The determinant factors, the intact roof, the congruent hip joint, the intact femoral head, stable hip joint, so we can take our decision in displaced acetabular fractures except both colon fractures. If the femoral head is congruent with the roof, we will ask ourselves what are the radiological factors, the roof arcs, the CT scan in the 10 millimeter subchondral ring, more than 60% of posterior wall intact. The, the head is stable under anesthesia in the fluoroscopic stress test, so we may decide non operative treatment. Otherwise, we will decide to operate, but we should ask ourselves. 
this injury, we can achieve an atomical reduction and maintain this reduction with internal fixation. If we can, then we will decide to do open reduction and internal fixation. If we can't, we may take a decision of non-operative treatment and late salvage with total hip replacement. If our decision, okay, we will improve the fracture, we will reduce it and do internal fixation, then consider the patient factors. The age is more than 60, other comorbidities, increased surgical risk, pre-existing hip arthritis, what are the patient's demands, then we may decide to go ahead with our surgery, or we may take the decision of non-operative treatment for later total hip arthroplasty if the patient complaint. If we decide to go with our surgery, then we will put the institutional factors in mind. Are the, surgeon, are the surgeons experienced and familiar with these type of injuries? The capability of this institution to treat such injuries? If yes, go ahead with open reduction therapy. If no, transfer the patient to the uh, from level one trauma center or the hospital where the, there is pelvic and stability. Regarding both colon fractures, we have what's called the secondary congruity. If it is present, again we will take into consideration the patient factors and the institutional factors to decide to go with open reduction internal fixation or to do conservative treatment in the same manner as mentioned before. So the decision of non-operative treatment may be taken in non-displaced fractures, fractures that don't involve the weight-bearing dome when the roof arc angles are more than 45 degrees in all views, in secondary congruity without evidence of subluxation of the femoral head in all views and in CT scan, when the hip joint is stable after reduction of the dislocation with small wall fragment and the stress views are okay. There is no re-dislocation. Operative treatment in displacement of the articular surface in roof, involvement in joint incongruity and joint instability. What is the proper timing for surgery. We should have a well resuscitated patient, proper pre-operative radiological workup, proper understanding of the fracture, proper operative team. Don't delay your surgery. The delayment will be on the expense of quality of reduction. The best time, I think, within the five days after trauma, not more. Do we have surgical emergencies? Yes. In open acetabular fracture, which is rare, in the sciatic nerve palsy after closed reduction of the hip dislocation, in irreducible posterior hip dislocation with wall fracture, in median dislocation of the femoral head, and in the presence of intra-articular fragment inside the hip joint. What's about the plan? Failing to plan is a planning to fail. We should do pre-operative planning in any surgery, and especially in a stabler surgery. You should plan every step in your surgery. The anesthesia, patient position, like the workshop done today morning, the CR, surgical approach, reduction techniques, and the implants. We will go quickly through this plan, how we can select our surgical approach according to the fracture type. Generally speaking, if we have posterior injuries, then we will go through posterior approach. Or if we have the transverse fractures with posterior displacement, we will go through the posterior approach. While if we have the anterior injuries, we will go through anterior approaches. The classic teaching, the inguinal approach and in associated both colon fractures, T fractures, anterior element with posterior hemitransverse, all will go from anterior in majority of cases. 
The modified scope approach is another option for anterior exposure of the STEM. And lastly, in the last year, we have also the paralectus approach as an alternative for anterior injuries. The extended iliofemoral approach has its own indications. It is not the routine one. We may have combined surgical approaches if we cannot achieve the job from one exposure. If we cannot achieve anatomical reduction of the fracture. What's about reduction? Reduction is the most important factor in treating these injuries. We have, we have all the tricks to achieve reduction, direct and indirect methods of reduction, using the joystick technique, using the traction, side traction, longitudinal traction, uh, direct clamps, pelvic clamps. You should use all the tricks to achieve anatomical reduction using the plate as a tool of reduction as well. After achieving reduction, how can we keep our reduction and how we can achieve stable establar fracture fixation? This can be achieved through plate fixation and at the same time, the leg screw fixation or the column screw fixation. According to the fracture pattern, we may put leg screws either alone or with plate fixation. How can we predict our clinical outcome? Anatomical reduction is the most important factor in prognosis of these acetabular injuries. Injury to the femoral head and articular cartilage injury is another factor. The time interval between hip dislocation and reduction is very important in determining KVN. Age of the patient, maintaining anatomic reduction in osteoporotic bone is a challenge. And lastly, surgeon's experience. This is one of the most important factors as well because it is intimately related to the quality of anatomical reduction. To conclude, decision-making process in acetabular fractures include patient evaluation and fracture assessment. The determined factors for decision-making include intact roof, congruent hip joint, intact femoral head, and stable hip joint. Fracture classification determines choice of our surgical approach and fixation. Preoperative planning is an integral part of surgical treatment, and it should include all the steps of the surgery. Thank you very much for your